Hello, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and a visionary of the Valder Beebe Show's That Celebrity Interview. Good morning, Tanya Winders. I want my audience to know that I've got two guests this morning. Tanya Winders, she's the president and CEO of Allergy and Asthma Network, and joining her is Dr. Bradley Chips of Capital Allergy and Respiratory Disease Center in Sacramento, California. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for having us. Dr. Uh, Chips, will you set the medical platform so my audience knows where we're going about allergy and asthma? Surely. Uh, asthma is a syndrome, not a disease. And we're going to be talking today about a, about a very specific part of this syndrome called severe eosinophilic asthma. It's about 5% of the asthma population. It's associated with late onset disease in the fourth or fifth decade of life. It's associated with a significant disease burden as it relates to daily, nighttime, and exercise symptoms, and also exacerbations where patients have significant increase in symptoms, often requiring oral corticosteroid. These are patients who have, in the peripheral blood compartment, elevated eosinophil counts, which are white blood cells that are a marker of disease activity and may lead us then to, in addition to the usual medications we use to treat their asthma, may lead us to using new, very exciting adjunctive therapies to help control their disease. Interesting. You call it a condition and not a disease. Tanya, let me ask you, how do you intersect with uh, asthma and allergy? Well, at Allergy and Asthma Network, we are a grassroots patient ad advocacy and patient education organization, and we've actually partnered alongside Teva and the Asthma Allergy Foundation of America to conduct this disease awareness campaign called Be the Boss of Your Asthma. And we have a website, bethebossofyourasthma.com, where patients can go to learn more about the various types of asthma and specifically severe eosinophilic asthma, or SEA. What, how do we raise awareness for uh, the listening population to be more proactive and more in charge or be the boss? Well, you know, if you're out there and you're one of the 22 million Americans that are living with asthma, certainly first and foremost, it's understanding if you're well controlled. The data would say that about half of patients aren't well controlled or optimally controlled. So if you're uncontrolled, understanding that and having the conversation with your doctor about that lack of control and how it's impacting your daily activities and daily living. We hear from patients that you know certainly can't walk up a flight of stairs or who can't go to school or work or who are having these bursts of oral steroids or ER visits or hospitalizations, and that's not okay. So having that conversation with your doctor, understanding the, the actual test that can be done to determine the type of asthma you may have, and then what the appropriate treatments are, are really critically important. I'm sure people who experience this have all the tips and maybe information they need, but what is one of the most recommended things that asthma or allergy sufferers need to know? Well, I think the thing that most patients need to know is that there's help out there. There is new and innovative approaches to diagnosing asthma and to treating asthma. And so understanding that and knowing where to go to the site, like the Be the Boss of Your Asthma.com website, is really a, a great way to understand more about your condition. What do you do if your uh, loved one has not formally been diagnosed, but you kind of think this is the problem? What is the next step for you? Well, you need to consult your primary health care provider to try to make an accurate diagnosis of asthma, which can be done, and then apply that diagnosis to the appropriate step care for therapy. That can be done in the primary care office, but often with severe eosinophilic asthma, needs to be done under specialty care where appropriate uh, diagnostic tools can be applied and then recommendations with shared decision making with the engagement of the patient in a conversation about the severity of their disease, 
what therapy should be undertaken and having a free flow conversation between the two provider and the patient in order to find a way forward to treat the disease. Thank you so very much. You guys, uh, this has been very informative because I'm looking at my Facebook post, which they listen to us live on Facebook, and a lot of people are saying, doctor, that their kids have asthma, and this will be my last question. Is it, is it confined to just kids, or kids have it worse than other people? Well, children, most asthma begins before the age of five, and we know that that is a form of asthma that can be persistent in about 15% of patients through adolescence and adult life. But asthma begins in childhood and needs to be treated appropriately to decrease both the uh, burden of the disease activity and also decrease acute exacerbations. Thank you. And then I got a whole screen of people say their allergy suffers, and we don't have time for that. But thank you guys for weighing in. I really appreciate that. And thanks for all my Facebook posts. Uh, I'll wrap up once again. If I can have that website for my audience, obviously they need that, Tanya. What's that website again? Be the Boss? Yes. Thank you, Valder. It's be the boss of your asthma.com. I want to thank you guys for talking about this subject, Dr. Bradley Chips and Tanya Winder. Thank you so much. This means a lot to my audience. Have a great day. Thank you.